Hi everyone and welcome to video number 16 on Henry and his ministers. Now this video ladies and gentlemen it's still about one of his ministers <coughs> excuse me Thomas Cromwell but the main point of this video ladies and gentlemen is about Henry VIII's second wife Anne Boleyn. Now if we remember May 1533, Henry VIII had had a huge celebration celebrating the annulment of his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon and showing Europe, showing England, showing the world his new queen, the coronation of Anne Boleyn. Huge celebrations which lasted four days. Henry was in love with Anne Boleyn. Henry had risked everything to marry Anne Boleyn, including upsetting foreign powers like France and Spain etc. So May 1533, brilliant, everything's rosy in the garden. Three short years ladies and gentlemen, May 1536, Anne Boleyn is executed. Wow, what's happened here? What has gone wrong? Hopefully in this video We'll look at the events of those three years and we'll try and concentrate and explain the reasons why it was that Anne Boleyn fell from power and ended up being beheaded. Well, let's go back. 1533. Remember when the secret marriage between Henry and Anne took place? Anne was pregnant. September 1533, the child was born, a daughter called Elizabeth. Henry, we know what he's like, was disappointed. But looking on the bright side for Henry, Anne had got pregnant very easily. She was still very young. There was no reason why next time they wouldn't have a son. But 1534, Anne is pregnant again. Hooray! But sadly, she had a miscarriage and lost a baby. Again, January 1536, Anne is pregnant again. Same pattern, miscarriage, lost the baby. Well, this is not good news at all for Anne, for Henry and for England. History seemed to be repeating itself. Henry's thinking, right, I'm not getting a male heir. I'm not having a son here. It can't be me because he already had a son with one of his mistresses. So he's saying it's not me. Therefore, it must be Anne Boleyn. And probably, just the same way he said it with Catherine, I am being punished by God. I shouldn't be married to Anne Boleyn. Exactly the same argument that he used with Catherine of Aragon. Henry saying it's not me. We know that Henry had always been desperate for a son, a male heir to continue the Tudor dynasty. Now, 1536, it was even more vital to produce a male heir, according to Henry. Why was that? Well, two things. One, early 1536, Henry fell from a horse. Knocked unconscious for a couple of hours, he was knocked out. His leg was permanently damaged, he was never the same again. He never jousted again, and he used to love jousting, he was very good at it. I suppose you could say, this was almost a knockout blow for Henry. It showed him, it brought home to Henry, the fragile nature of his health, the future what would happen if Henry were to die and there was no male heir? Well, according to the 1534 Act of Succession, Elizabeth would become the next ruler of England. Now, Henry did not want that because he thought England would be better with a man, a male. It was very sexist, but that's what it was like back then. Also, the Pope was threatening to issue what was called a papal bull, like a special document ordering something. And if that had been issued, then 
countries like France and Spain might decide to invade England to follow the Pope's orders. So again, in Henry's mind, the need for a son was becoming more and more important. And Anne was showing through her unfortunate miscarriages that she could not produce a son. Henry's getting annoyed. Henry's getting irritated. Henry is getting angry. Also, Anne's personality was beginning to grate on Henry. She was quite flirty, flirtatious. Henry was not impressed. In fact, he was a bit embarrassed. Also, Anne was quite opinionated. She had strong opinions. Now, you might think today that's great. Back then, of course, it was a slightly different approach. People thought of her as being bossy. Maybe if she's got ideas about the foreign policy of England, if she's got ideas about the religion of England, maybe she should keep them to herself, people were saying. Again, Henry's not impressed. So just at the time where Anne is failing to provide him with a son, and is getting on Henry's nerves. At the same time, Henry's roving eye strikes again. He was never the most faithful of husbands. And this time, he spotted one of the ladies in waiting for Anne at the court, a young woman called Jane Seymour. Now, Jane Seymour in some ways, was the exact opposite of Anne. She was quiet. She was shy. She was very reserved. Well, just at the time when Henry's being annoyed by Anne's bossiness, Jane Seymour seems attracted to him. Also, Anne isn't providing him with a son. Maybe Jane will. So Henry spots Jane Seymour and wants to make Jane his new queen. To do that, of course, he has to get rid of Anne. March, April, 1536. The gossips around the court. It was a very poisonous, a very toxic atmosphere. And rumours were spreading. Started by, we do not know. Rumours were spreading that Anne was guilty of adultery. Bang! Henry could jump on this opportunity. And he handed the situation over to his chief minister, Thomas Cromwell. Well, what we know about Cromwell, it was Cromwell's job, remember, to make sure Henry got what he wanted. When Henry wanted Catherine of Aragon's marriage annulled, so that he could marry Anne, Cromwell delivered. Now, Henry wants Anne out of the picture, leaving him free to marry Jane. Cromwell has to deliver. I suppose you could argue that Cromwell was very much like <clears throat> a good postman. He always delivered. So, that's the background. What were the actual events? leading up to the execution. End of April, 30th of April, 1536. A court musician, young gentleman by the name of Mark Smeaton, was arrested, taken to Cromwell's house, probably tortured. Again, no one can be 100% certain. Probably tortured. Certainly questioned. And... He admitted an affair with Anne Boleyn. Into May 1536, over the next four days, four other men were arrested, including, quite bizarrely, Anne's brother, George Boleyn. All were arrested. All were charged with adultery with Anne Boleyn. All four denied it. Now, whether it was true or false, it's difficult to know. No one probably really knows. But for us, the important thing was that Henry 
believed it. And once Henry has believed it, there was no hope for any of them. 15th of May, 1536, Anne Boleyn was put on trial. Coincidentally, one of the men organising and leading the trial was her own uncle, the Duke of Norfolk. It wouldn't save Anne. Family ties, there were no family loyalty. Anne was found guilty, as were Mark Smeaton, George Boleyn and the other three men. All would be executed. Anne Boleyn, 19th of May. 1536. She wasn't executed by an axe. They got a swordsman, one of the top executioners over from France to do the deed. Anne Boleyn executed. Cromwell. Yet again, Cromwell had solved another key problem for Henry. Henry was now free to marry Jane Seymour, which he did. 11 days later, he didn't wait around, did he? He didn't mourn his wife. No, 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 he's moved on. And Cromwell has helped provide the answer for Henry VIII. Well, let's have a look at the role of Cromwell. He was very important in the downfall of Anne Boleyn. You've got to remember, he was a top lawyer. So he built the case of Anne being guilty of adultery. He interrogated Smeaton, the first person arrested, probably allowed the torture. We don't really know, but he was very involved in the interrogation. He also interrogated the other four. He had spies all over the court within Anne's own little area, the ladies in waiting. Many of the servants were all spies, eyes and ears, working for Cromwell, reporting back to him so he could collect the evidence to present at trial. So he was vital to the downfall and execution of Anne Boleyn. Now, there has been a controversy between historians. Some historians have suggested, well, Cromwell himself wanted to get rid of Anne. He was at the centre of it and he persuaded Henry. There evidence for that. One, Anne had plotted against Wolsey and Cromwell feared history repeating itself. Two, Anne did disagree with Cromwell on matters of policy. For example, money, money that was raised from the dissolution of the monasteries and wanted its spending on charities and schools Cromwell wanted it to go to the crown as revenue, extra money for the king. Foreign policy, Anne wanted to ally more with France. Cromwell was more keen to ally with Charles V, the emperor. I'll come back to that in a minute. So there are some historians who suggested for those reasons, Cromwell was the driving force in getting rid of Anne. Most historians, however, look at it a slightly different way. And they say, no, no, no. Cromwell was just being the loyal servant to his master, King Henry. It was Henry who was the driving force and Cromwell just organised it for him. Well, what's their evidence? Number one, Henry was now a mature man. He was a very responsible person, maybe difficult to manipulate not very easily manipulated, so they disagree that Cromwell could manipulate Henry. Secondly, they point out, if Henry could be manipulated, well then all Cromwell would have to do is manipulate Henry and persuade him to ignore Anne's policy demands, the dissolution of the monastery's money, etc. They also pointed, point number three, Cromwell and Anne, although they did disagree on some policies, they actually agreed on the Protestant reforms in the church. So therefore, there was agreement between the two. And finally, they suggest it was a very dangerous thing for Cromwell to do, to suggest to Henry that Anne was being unfaithful. 
if Henry didn't want to hear that, if Henry was saying, no, 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 she's my wife, I love her, I want to keep her, it was a dangerous thing for Cromwell to do. So they suggest that surely the impetus, the thrust to get rid of Anne Boleyn came from Henry and Cromwell just loyally did what he was supposed to do as the chief minister. Just a bit of a controversy there. So finally, to sum up, Anne Boleyn, three years as queen, a very, very sticky end. Well, what were the reasons? Well, there's many, as I've tried to show you. Certainly one of the most important was her inability to provide a son. If she had, who knows? Crom uh, Henry VIII would have put up with her. We don't know. But not producing a son was huge. Secondly, Henry himself looking at elsewhere, as usual, Jane Seymour. She plays a role in the downfall of Anne because Henry's head has been turned. Anne's personality herself, it needs to be examined. She was flirtatious around other men. Whether she had affairs with them, who knows? But it gave Henry a chance, an excuse, if you like. She was considered to be bossy and getting involved in policy decisions. And maybe Henry didn't like that. Maybe she made enemies, which meant that the court could gossip and spread their rumours about her. And Henry wanted to believe the rumours because there was no son and his head had been turned by Jane Seymour. Can you see how it links together? Finally, the position of Cromwell. Cromwell's skill, Cromwell's ruthlessness, Cromwell's ability. His organisation is at the centre. Remember, Cromwell himself, he was trying to make a diplomatic friendship towards the Emperor Charles V. Well, Charles V was related to Catherine of Aragon. If Anne Boleyn was no longer the Queen, maybe it would be easier for Cromwell to make diplomatic manoeuvres with Emperor Charles V. So there we have it, the three years Anne Boleyn as Queen. No one messed with Henry VIII. So, as I said a couple of minutes ago, after 11 days, Henry is married for a third time, this time to Jane Seymour. Well, what will happen next? Hope to see you in the next video while I'll explain it. As ever, hope it's been useful. All the best now.